33 minutes past the hour. It's the Jeff Santo Show that you're tuned into. Coming to you live from the uh, South Coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It is uh, with um, a lot of uh, frustration uh, on today's show, uh, folks. And um, it's it's important to be frustrated if you're a progressive and uh, we need to get things done and we need to win elections and as robert craig says we need to win these purple districts uh as progressives and of course there's a lot of roadblocks to uh, making that happen but i will tell you this if we uh say and do uh what i like to say is keep on fighting peacefully I think we'll uh, just get there. Somebody who does that every day of the week and, uh, well, every day and plus on Sundays, as they say, is our next guest. He is an activist. He is, uh, of course, a great journalist, Democracy Watch News, and he's a great musician. He's our Renaissance man right here every Friday on the Jeff Santos Show at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 Pacific. He is MTC. And he joins us from the 206 there in Seattle, WA. MTC, how are you, man? In the studio, as usual, Jeff, rocking out. And uh, we just wrote this new song called Who Do You Think You're Fooling? about a corrupt politician. So we need to carry people there. And. We have a new rehearsal space here in Seattle, brand new, brand new speaking, beautiful place uh, out in the industrial area of the city where we can rock out to our hearts, uh, content, and there'll be good claims. And I've been playing some small gigs every week, but the band's still kind of uh, recording our full-length release. At first, we were going to do a, a shorter EP um, with just like three or four songs, but now I've written so many new songs that uh, we have a lot more to rehearse and record. So. We're sort of following an example of Queen, by the way. Roy Thomas Baker wrote a really great, that's the producer, wrote a really great book about them. And he talked about how for their first year, they just rehearsed and played their songs over and over again until they were really, really good before they actually got out and started steady gigs and touring. So I think we're, we're kind of following that pattern. And I've also been doing some videos on YouTube where I play the electric guitar and talk about rock and roll. So that's cool. And also a quick shout out to my buddy, Terrence Winder, who just got his first show as a photojournalist at our friend Steve Gilbert's gallery here in Seattle. So that'll be next Thursday on Art Walk. And that's quite a coup for Terrence. It's his first actual show as a, as a photographer. And I believe that studio, that gallery, hasn't really featured many African-American photographers before. So it's quite a coup for him. He's breaking through. And we're really glad to see that. He's breaking into our photography scene. And then earlier this week, I climbed a mountain, which would have been considered sort of a moderate-sized mountain here, but I guess on the East Coast, or in the Midwest, it would have been considered a pretty big mountain, Mount Sai, which is here in the Cascades. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful climb, Jeff, and one of the greatest reasons to live in the Northwest is just... Uh, well, you know, I mean, I, 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 I love the, the Cascades that are there, and it's, um, you know, uh, and, and you got Mount Rainier, of course, and which I had a chance to hike a little bit uh, a few years back. We are having some technical difficulties uh, connecting uh, from here in Boston, or greater Boston, to um, our good friend uh, MTC, and hopefully those uh, gurgles will uh, go away um, as uh, we broadcast here on the Jeff Santos Show. Uh, Mark, it's, um, uh, it's great to uh, uh, chat with you right now because we've had a very intense... Uh, discussion with our contributors today, David Paleologos, Harvey Cage, Joe Sandberg, uh, and we're all very, very frustrated, you know, about the uh, slow pace of the Democrats and President Biden, and of course, uh, very frustrated and disgusted with what's happened uh, to our friends in Ukraine. But there is, uh, I think, some hope uh, from the uh, leader of the Progressive Caucus in your great state of Washington and of course the great city of Seattle which she represents Miss Jayapal she has uh, uh, brought back the bacon um, the federal infrastructure package is an 8.6 billion dollar game changer says Google for the state of Washington 
Um, I think Miss Jaya Paul had a lot to do with that. Uh, she is obviously uh, a big, big time player. And I've asked you this question before. Will she entertain the idea uh, of running for Senate? And is Mario Cantwell rumored to see either step down or or try to get a post in the White House? I'm not sure. Uh, because I think she would be, uh, even though she's been very good in the Progressive Caucus, you know, I think she'd be a fantastic senator. What's, uh, what's the latest on uh, Ms. Jayapal? Well, you know, in the past, I haven't been that impressed with Patty Murray, but she was also able to bring home some of the bacon. She got us over, what was it, $1 billion, $170 million for Pacific Coastal Salmon Recovery, the fund that is set up here for that. So, you know, the person, one of the people that she might be running against has actually been doing a better job lately of actually helping out the state. But um, Jaya Paul had a town meeting earlier this week that I was invited to. She talked about the infrastructure issues. In Washington State, uh, we've had 321 bridges, including the West Seattle Bridge here in Seattle, which is being replaced. It's, there's a traffic uh, snafu now trying to get to West Seattle from downtown because they tore down the viaduct, the Alaska Way viaduct, which is a famous place, and 90,000 people got together and partied on it just before they tore it, tore it down as a city celebration. But uh, the West Seattle Bridge, when that's the purview of Lisa Herbal, um, which was Nick Lakata's kind of protege, Nick was a former friend of mine and former um, city council president. He does a lot of writing over at the media now. But she's been working on that project. But we've had um, 5,000 bridges in the state of Washington that were in need of repair. And one of them, a couple of years ago, actually collapsed. And people were killed and injured up in northern, up by Bellingham in northern Washington. So it's something that sorely needed the Washington Association of Business claims that we need $222 billion in infrastructure spending in the state uh, in order to deal with our infrastructure problems, um, which, which would be a great boom. That would be 700,000 new jobs, according to them. Um, so, yes, we were able to get quite a few billion, at least 8.6 out of the federal funding. And, you know, one good thing that you have to say Joe Biden was able to do is, you know, get, to get a bipartisan agreement on infrastructure. Um, but there's also federal funding available still above and beyond that. So we're getting um, billions in for a highway and light rail and a, you know, public transit here, which is really important. And Jai Paul has been really on this uh, since the beginning. She's been very much about rebuilding the infrastructure in Washington State. Of course, she covers so many important issues, but this is one that she's been very consistent on. And, you know, we have to replace these bridges that are in poor poor condition and we also need to recover our salmon run because of all the urbanization you know a lot of the streams are now culverts so the salmon can't get back to their original spawning ground so one of the plans for this money the billion dollars that's coming in to the pacific coastal salmon recovery fund would be to do away with those culverts but as far as the money for senate i don't know i mean it's only a matter of time before either maria cantwell or patty murray decide to retire so I looks to me like the Democrats are, you know, and Pramila being a, you know, a big Democrat, she's going to go along with the leadership here. They um, are, they're sitting on those two seats right now, and they just want to keep Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell in there, I think. Um, women are very powerful in politics in this state. You know, we had a, a female governor uh, in Christine Gregoire. We just uh, had a female uh, mayor in Seattle, Jane Durkin. Our two senators are female. Um, our you know, most uh, proactive and effective city council members like Shama Swan or you know. So I remember once I broke into a sort of broke into well, let's say I infiltrated uh, a Republican um, meeting down in, in San Francisco about the West Coast politics and the, the election here, and they said that any um, man who is a Republican who runs against a female Democrat in the Northwest is automatically twenty points behind. Hey, hey, Morad, Jaya Paul is right there leading the charge. Yeah, and she's been a great um, representative for my district. So I'm really, really glad that she's there representing us. 
I, I am I'm too. I was wondering if it's at all possible, and I, I uh, just uh, texted you uh, the number. If you could call us back, because we're getting every other word, um, at, l at least I am, and uh, I want to make sure we can uh, hear all of you. Uh, so uh, give us a, give us a shout back. You just check your your cell there, um, and uh, we appreciate okay, that. I'll do that yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, so uh, in the meantime, while we uh, try to get Mark uh, to get us a call back, uh, let's go up to uh, uh, Minneapolis and, and talk to our good friend John. Uh, John, I know you, um, you have a lot to talk to Mark about. And uh, actually, let's do this. Uh, we'll bring Mark back on, and then you can ask him uh, uh, your question as well. Uh, make it easier on, uh, on that. Um, here he is, uh, MTC. Let's see, you sound a little bit better. Uh, go ahead, uh, give us a little test, MTC. Testing one, two, three. This oh, is much rocks. better. Yeah, no, this has been uh, much. This is a much, much better line, so I can hear you better too. Great, excellent, excellent, excellent. Very good. All right. Um, uh, you know, I think it's it's important, uh, again, as I said before, for Seattle to lead. Uh, it's a progressive state that gave us the $15 minimum wage, which we just talked to Joe Sandberg about. Of course, he's trying to push the $18 minimum wage down there in California. Uh, you gave us the legalization of marijuana, you guys in Colorado, and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and progressives like Inslee, like Jaya Paul, and before that, McDermott. So, I think... Whatever we can do to sort of, you know, test it there in, in Seattle and in western Washington state, I think is, is uh, really important for the rest of the country. As a matter of fact, we mentioned the other day that Michelle Wu, the mayor of Boston, we hope to have on in the coming weeks, is a... Uh, uh, advocating for free public transit in terms of subways in Boston and so forth. And I, I really think that, you know, something like that, if it's done, I know you have limited light rail and, and of course, the, the monorail, but uh, I think that that could really do well in Seattle. And as a tourist mecca that it is, I think there's a there's a great particularly in the summertime. I know you don't want to, you know, tell anybody about, you know, it's sunny in the winter too, but you know, in the summer. No, it's, it's always cloudy here. It rains all the time. It rains all the way. Don't move here. Terrible. <laughs> well, your your so your, your property up. rates and your rent is high enough. Exactly. Um, <laughs> well, let me let me uh, let me just say, uh, you know, the thing that that really is is gives me hope. As I said, we have a lot of frustration, and they talk about the state of the union and and and, and the whole situation with Ukraine. Um, and, and how we can really stop the madness there, uh, you know, and the, the poor people of Ukraine, you know, thousands of dead already. Uh, there is there is a lot that uh, I know the people of Seattle are doing in Ukraine, but give me your thoughts. A lot has changed, you know, since um, we spoke last Friday. It's gotten much worse. Obviously, it happened on Wednesday night, so we did talk to you. Uh, a couple of days after the uh, the invasion, but how, as a journalist, as, as an activist, how do you look at this situation from where you are, the people that you're talking to, how do they feel about Ukraine, and what is happening with Russia? Well, no one wants more war, and of course no one wants um, to see NATO or our own country involved in another war, but also people are pretty much fed up with this idea of, of these human rights abuses, which are probably going to be end up being international war crimes, um, we had uh, what over a hundred UN members of the of the Human Rights Council walk out of that big conference um, when the Russian representative was trying to justify the invasion. So that's kind of you know the feeling here is that you know democracy is something that we fight for in the United States. And of course, we want to stand up for countries in other places that um, that are struggling too. And you know, so there's no love loss here for for what's happening. The governor, uh, so for Russia at least, uh, there's a lot of empathy for the people in Ukraine and the, all the refugees pouring into Poland and other places. 
Although we are getting some reports that there's been some racism involved and that some black folks have been treated yeah, pretty badly. Yeah, no, I've, I've certainly, oh, really. yes, people going into Poland. Yeah. yeah. I still think that's but a small yeah, piece of the puzzle, just Poland. as there are neo-Nazis there, but not. it's not the overwhelming majority of the people of Ukraine. Uh, yeah. But go ahead, I'm sorry. J Our Governor Jay Inslee has called for boycotts for state and private boycotts. Of course, he can't control what private industry does. I guess he could if he has some kind of executive order because he definitely used some of his emergency powers during the pandemic. But um, he's calling for a statewide uh, boycott of any Russian business interests. So, you know, and it's, it's sad because, you know, there are people in Russia who don't support Putin who are suffering too because of all of this. That's what happens when boycotts and sanctions happen um, so everyone suffers, but, you know, it's the only tool we have, you know, short of military um, force, so what's, what do we do? The governor calls for a boycott of all state agencies, you know, dealing with Russian business interests. Um, there are people who are, who are saying, you know, don't buy the Russian vodka, just forget it, boycott that. So there are definitely boycott campaigns going on, although I have to say, I said the grocery store, just recently the state-operated um, liquor stores were changed due to a statewide initiative, largely backed by the big box stores who wanted to, you know, sell liquor. But now, um, a hard alcohol is sold in uh, grocery stores, not necessarily corner stores or, you know, 7-Elevens like you might find in California or Nevada, but um, definitely the, the larger grocery stores. Um, and I was there yesterday, just, you know, shopping, buying supplies for my place, and there you go people were stocking up on the vodka. So some people, you know, it's kind of like just before Prohibition, I guess, where everybody wanted to stock up because they knew there wouldn't be available. But you know, that's kind of <laughs> cheesy. If you really want to... Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, really, if you need to, you, you, you're that addicted to vodka that you're going to do that. I mean, I mean, I like to say, come on now, uh, get a grip. All right, let's let's uh, let's go to um, our good friend uh, John in Minneapolis and... Um, uh, you are uh, going to be next with our good friend MTC. Go right ahead, John. Yeah, uh, I don't know about, uh, you know, if you have the same in Seattle, but we have a large Ukrainian community that have been here for years, and especially there was a big diaspora after World War II of displaced persons. Uh, and if you go north of the border in Canada, throughout western Canada, there's a huge uh, settlement of uh, Ukrainians, um, you know, and I think that uh, what we really should focus on as progressives is authoritarianism in this country. Sinclair Lewis wrote a book that could never happen here, and there was, you know, we had authoritarians in this country in the 1930s, and they uh, wanted to take over the government from Franklin Delano Roosevelt, but their plan right. uh, really didn't get anywhere. But, you know, this kind of thing is happening right here in our own backyard, and we need to draw, you know, a line between what what happens when you have an authoritarian, one person who makes all of the decisions, if they go off the deep edge, everybody else is a yes man. It's worse. It's literally worse than the Politburo running the, an entire country. That's my opinion. I don't know how you feel about it, but it's just it's very, very discouraging. And you know, musicians need to you know get in there and with with the best protest songs about war, like the hard rain's gonna fall. You know, uh, the, the Bob Dylan song, which was about uh, nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons should be removed from the face of the earth along with nuclear reactors that, you know, are, they can be used as weapons, and they, and they become weapons. If yeah, they're, I mean, what we're weapons. seeing right now, and, yeah. you know, I have yeah. a comment yeah. in Ukraine. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, I have a comment yeah. to, what, to what John was saying. So, come you masters of war, you build a big bomb, you can play with my world. Like it's your little toy. I always want you to know that I speed through your brain. Like I see through the water that rolls down my dreams. You have never done nothing but build to destroy. 
Anyway, that's Bob Dylan, and that's my favorite anti-war song of all time. And man, you play yeah. that song sometimes, and it really gets to the heart of the matter. It really gets, you know, uh, gets people to yeah. get. So, yeah. yeah, and I've been dealing with authoritarianism as a journalist, you know, under the Trump administration, but also oh, yeah, uh, watching... Exactly. We all have work with reporters about borders, the Committee to Protect yep. Journalists, all over the world. Reporters are yep. being attacked right now, being jailed and threatened and run out yep. of the country by authoritarians yep. because they don't want a free press, they don't want free expression, and they don't want uh, criticism against the regime because once you start asking questions, then that house of card falls. So let's hope that we can keep our democracy here in the United States and that people will continue to be able to criticize our government and second guess our leaders and you know call them out when they need to be called out because otherwise yeah it's a great point you got one person in charge and if they have to turn out to be a person who doesn't have the best interests of most people in mind you're in trouble we saw that during world war ii we saw that during the cold war we know exactly how this works we've seen this scenario played out before oh, yeah. and in some cases it did lead to mass you know, con conflicts so around the world. But let's hope that doesn't happen this time and cooler heads will prevail. That's my hope. Well, just coming out of Moscow yep. today uh, is the New York Times or uh, breaking news. Russia blocked access to Facebook and threatened up to 15 years in prison for those who stray from the state narrative on the wall on the war in Ukraine. I mean, if, you know, Mr. Putin isn't a fascist, I don't know what is. You know, he may talk about yeah. the neo-Nazis on the other side, but, you know, he, he takes the cake. Uh, and again, you know, ex ex exactly. So, you know, there you go. That's another I mean, major the tool that authoritarians are using is shutting down access to the web. And ever since, you know, there was a, some uh, genocide happening in um, uh, Timor years ago, and that broke on the web, and the Indonesian government had to admit that it was happening. It's, you know, all governments during the Arab Spring, all those governments realized how powerful a tool um, this kind of communication can be. It's a telecommunications yep. revolution. So, yeah, they're right. definitely into shutting it down whenever they can, too. That's another aspect of authoritarianism that we keep having to deal with. And I'm just hoping, you know, that artists, musicians, uh, journalists will stand up and reclaim our right to speak and have uh, free freedom of expression. I also just watched another, I watched the Tommy Douglas story again, uh, The Prairie Giant, it's called, it's the name of the film. I highly recommend people see it. Um, brilliant actors in that film. And it showed how he ran, even in Canada, he ran into some kind of authoritarian right-wingers who were really yep. trying to block any kind of health care insurance so he knew what stuff that he was going to do. They tried to dismantle his whole administration there in Saskatchewan, called him a communist and everything. So we have to be careful, you know. This stuff can happen anywhere at any time. It just oh, yeah. Up, you know, I mean, you know, and, and, and by the way, folks, just for those of you who are uh, new to the show and uh, I'm not aware of Tommy Douglas, we're talking about Kiefer Sutherland's uh, a grandfather, I believe, uh, the great, the actor from 24 oh, and so forth. So yeah. there's the connections, you know, to uh, to Mr. Douglas, the uh, who started out, by the way, uh, getting it done in, uh, you know, where there are more deer and uh, uh, and antelope than there are people there in Saskatchewan. So it can be done. You yep. start at the yep. slower and the more, you know the uh, smaller uh, provinces of Canada uh, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, they, started, you know, there you go. He ran he ran um, as an NDP, a New Democratic Party uh, right. candidate, um, and that and the NDP has completely taken over British Columbia. So if you you know it's the it's the majority of the parliament, and yeah, a lot of people would call them democratic socialists, but the NDP you yeah. know you know brought people um, through the pandemic, who gave them stimulus packages and ways to you know make it through. And that's what people need. You know, they need some help from the government. They don't need the government, you know, trying to be authoritarian and stuff. Well, you know, you know we've support. had... We've had 40 years, uh, unfortunately, of, of the Reagan line, you know, backed up by Republicans and a lot of Democrats who buy in. They, you know, government is the problem, not the solution. And we really have not had Democrats push back against that, exception of, of Bernie Sanders. And if we're going to have a better country, we're going to have to have good government that works, not this, uh, you know, phony BS that, you know, was propagated by uh, late night Fox hosts and, and uh, others, uh, you know, connected to the former president, you know, going after uh, poor friends in Canada, you know, making a big deal of nothing where 90% of the truckers are vaccinated, even though they 
thought that the entire country was against vaccinations and against mask wearing. You know, and this is this is the BS that we had to deal with. And of course, you know, 80 percent of the country is vaccinated. It's such a but this is what we got to push back against. You know, the information uh, needs to be told to the American people and for that matter, people around the world. Uh, John, thank you for the call. Uh, appreciate you as always. Uh, MTC, check them out on YouTube and a lot of other places too, right, Mark? Yeah, you can hear my music, you can see my music videos. Mother Freedom is dedicated to people struggling for freedom all over the world, including the Ukrainians. So you can check that out at YouTube. Keep on rocking, Jeff. You're doing a great job. You too, man. Thank you. Have yourself a great weekend. I want to thank Ron Carter for producing this broadcast. Uh, thank you all for listening, for calling the best callers in radio. Have a wonderful weekend, folks. Until Monday, my name is Jeff Santos, and right now, it is my time to say hi. I'm gonna go!